episode on YouTube for Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. I understand I've actually been away for a little bit, uh, working on a couple of things here, both site-related and outside. Uh, but today we're actually going to talk about something that actually happened over the weekend uh, involving a team that was very busy at the trade deadline, but not in the way that you might think. Um, we all know, uh, we all saw what the San Diego Padres did with picking up Juan Soto, uh, the biggest trade, arguably, in the history of the Major League Baseball trade deadline. Uh, and then they proceed to go out and get swept by the Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, to falling even further back in that division. Uh, I think now the, yeah, according to this, the Dodgers are now 16 games up but have won eight in a row, and the Padres have lost five straight really since this trade occurred. Uh, but what what we're going to talk about here today is what occurred on Sunday afternoon between the Minnesota Twins and the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, we've already talked about earlier this year uh, what happened with Toronto kind of getting hosed by the umpires where um, players were thrown at uh, against the Yankees and then Toronto's manager got a quick hook. Uh, and then uh, and this was when Toronto was still within striking distance of the Yankees, and now they're ten and a half games back, uh, even though the Yankees right now are playing some very, very poor baseball. Um, but again, it's something where the Yankees are so far out in front. I don't know if Toronto's got enough talent or firepower to catch them, even Tampa Bay at that point. Uh, even more surprising, Baltimore now five games over 500, despite being sellers at the deadline. One of the teams that were buyers were the Twins. The Twins went out and picked up three arms, two relievers, and starting pitcher Tyler Molly, um, at the uh, uh, again at the deadline to try and bolster the uh, uh, bolster the the pitching staff. Um, not specifically the rotation. Molly's not you know an, an ace by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but definitely somebody who can <coughs> give a little bit of relief to. Minnesota's bullpen, if necessary, with the game tied two-two in the top of the tenth, the uh, um, the Blue Jays had Whit Merrifield on third and two down in the inning, and Kevin Biggio, uh, who you know is the son of Major League Baseball Hall of Famer and probably one of my all-time favorite players, Craig Biggio, uh, at the dish, he sends a soft fly ball caught by Byron Buxton in center. Merrifield tags up and is originally called out on a beautiful, beautiful, borderline perfect throw by uh, by Buxton. Um, immediately, Merrifield jumped up, not only yelling at the umpire that he was safe, but also telling his manager, uh, uh, John Schneider, who took over after... Uh, you know, in an interim role after Toronto's original manager was fired a couple of weeks ago, um, immediately asked him to challenge the call, which Schneider did. And the call was eventually overturned, uh, much to the dismay of the thousands of fans at, uh, at Target Field in Minnesota, because it was shown that not only did Minnesota catcher Gary Sanchez block the plates with his leg and not give Merrifield a clear sliding lane, namely calling interference on Sanchez. But also with the way that Merrifield slid in, there's a very good possibility the toe or the heel even beat the dish or to beat the tag from Sanchez uh, to the punch. Now, and the thing was is that the way, the way that he slid down, um, Merrifield's leg completely disappeared under Sanchez, so there's no way that any angle, unless it was like directly over the top of, of you know of Sanchez, would have been able to see, or directly over the top of the plate would have been able to see the toe hit. But you can definitely tell just with the way that the leg was extended that even before the interference call, that Merrifield beat Sanchez to the uh, you know Merrifield's foot beat. Uh, got to the dish before Sanchez could apply the tag. This uh, this naturally incensed um, Minnesota manager Rocco Baldelli, who came out and was tossed within seconds uh, by by the crew, by the umpiring crew. It was the third time he was ejected all year. The more important matter uh, was that the loss actually 
put the Twins at 57-51, and 51, and they are only one game up on the overachieving Cleveland Guardians. And just think of, not even trying to sound like a homer here, think of how far out in front the Guardians would be if they could get any kind of run support out of a Shane Bieber, or if Bieber had, uh, you know, had come back after that uh, that shoulder injury last year, uh, anywhere close to what his form was before he got hurt, or even more importantly, what uh, how he looked in 2020. Um, and also right on uh, right on both of them are the Chicago White Sox, who everyone predicted was going to be running away with this division by this time. The Sox are now 55 and 53. They are two games over 500. It's actually the highest they've been over 500 now since just before Memorial Day. Uh, with the White Sox win on July 31st, it was their it was the first time they'd actually been over 500 since May the 25th. The Twins right now are doing everything in their power not to get into the postseason, or if they do, to basically get in by the skin of their teeth to where if they were to reseed all of the playoff teams, they'd actually be the one on the road for a wild card game, despite being a division winner, kind of like the NFL. Um, remember the scenario we had several years ago where the Seattle Seahawks won the NFC West and hosted a playoff game despite only being 7-9 and nine on the season. And there was a potential that they could have been 6-10 and 10. Uh, hosting that playoff game. The Twins right now are eighth in baseball in batting average. Uh, they, are, uh, they are hitting 251 as a team, tied right now with the Guardians, and just mere, uh, just a mere one percentage point uh, batting average point behind the Cardinals for seventh and two points behind the Boston Red Sox for sixth. They rank eighth in home runs uh, this season, with, uh, with 133, the problem right now is their pitching. They're, the Twins currently rank, they're in the bottom half of the league in ERA. They are 19th in ERA at 4.02. They only have 23 quality starts from the rotation, which is second worst in baseball. Only the Washington Nationals are worse. Uh, and they also rank 20th in strikeouts. Uh, from and that's across everything. So the issue is not Minnesota's ability to hit. It's the it's Minnesota right now. It's their ability to get guys out. Um, the Twins have been out in front for most of the season, albeit for very early on in the year, um, and then a little bit of time in mid May where the Guardians actually overtook them for a day or two. Um, but Minnesota right now has had the division lead, but it's really been no bigger than one game or, or as many as six for the, drum, uh, for the dramatic point of the 2022 campaign. No matter, uh, it's, It always seems that they go on, I don't want to say losing streaks, but they start playing very bad baseball, and then the Guardians start to wake up a little bit, and now the, sh- and, and now the Shy Sox have gotten into the foray. Um, of this to make this very interesting. The the White Sox right now are fifth in baseball and batting at 257. And the Guardians and the White Sox, their bats are waking up. Minnesota right now has got to get a clue as to what they're doing defensively because the, their issue isn't scoring. Again, their issue is the ability to get teams out when they need to. Um Otherwise, there's a potential right now. The, the, the Twins go out to the uh, to Los Angeles, to Chavez Ravine, uh, for a quick two-game set against the Dodgers. While the Guardians are on the road against Detroit, who they've historically dominated for about the last decade, and then the White Sox, who are rounding into form right now, get to play Kansas City, who's also one of the bottom two teams in the American League Central. So there's a scenario here that come the weekend, because after their series with the Dodgers, the Twins get to host the Milwaukee Brewers, who are only two games back of the Cardinals in the NL Central, and have led that division. Uh, They've been going back and forth with the Cardinals atop that division all year long. So there's a scenario right now with the Twins, with 
their next four, five, six games, and then the Guardians and the White Sox that we could go into this weekend for the next edition of the Wise Guys Sports Show, and the Twins could actually be in third place. And it's not out of the realm of possibility of thinking so. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below. Uh, like and subscribe if you're interested. I'm never going to beg you guys for it. If you enjoy the content, I'm glad to actually have you. If I'm not your cup of tea, there are many, many other content providers out there uh, that would be worth your time. And uh, and just always always support your favorite uh, your favorite producer uh, or or a talent here on YouTube. We're all just one happy family. We certainly hope to be. Um, and the next episode of the Wise Guy Sports Show will likely be taking place uh, on my channel, but it will be this weekend. Mike and I are still deciding, though, if we're going to do Friday night the 12th or if we're going to do Saturday night for the uh, um, Saturday night the 13th. And also keep, uh, keep your calendars open. The weekend after Labor Day, which I want to say is either the 10th, 11th, or 12th, one of those three days, is going to be the one-year anniversary of the Wise Guys Sports Show. And all bets are off, all gloves are off, and we are going to have a big, big party. Uh, and we're going to have, hopefully, a lot of guests on. Uh, you guys can, can absolutely uh, drop us a line. We've got the ability to host up to six people at once. Uh, to, certainly, you can live comment. You can tweet the show. You can find us on Facebook Live uh, because we believe we're going to try and get this simulcast on Mike's channel as well. Um, but again, uh, great to see everybody again. It's uh, I, I will be back uh, a lot more often throughout the course of the rest of this month, and uh, and we will see you guys this weekend. Take care, everyone.